Okay, so Nicardia, they're non spore forming, branching, aerobic, um, actinomyces. So, bullet point. So we got aerobic. Transfer beaded. I'm positive. And really what I like to do, and I think I've told you all before, is let's say this is all gram positive, and to sit there and write it or color it in like purple. And if it's gram negative, sit there and color it in like pink or highlight it. And I should have been doing it with these, but I didn't. Okay, and so like the wording here, it says that in many instances, finely beaded branching rods are a primary clue that a clinical sample contains a uh, Nicardia species. So do you think that's important or not important? Important. Important. Because you can have 10 things that are similar between a bunch of species, but you need the one or two things um, that separate them. So primary clue, finely beaded branching rods, uh, non-spore forming. What else do y'all see that's important? Partially acid fast. Yep, so they're able to retain the primary stain only when a weak acid is used as a decolorizer during the acid fast staining process. Um, so that's shown in 16.14b. So partial acid fast. So what's another key thing that it says? Growth may take a week or longer. Yes, that is exactly what I was looking at. So standard non-selective media. I put greater than one week to grow, but can take up to a week or longer, so. So found worldwide, worldwide in soil, um, plant materials, several have been implicated in human infections. Um, generally, uh, the infections occur in immunocompromised patients. Uh, reports of infection in patients with no apparent illness or immunosuppressive therapy are increasing. So we can put, um, Immunocompromised, not oh, you know, immunocompromised. So, you know, immunocompromised, and then I'm also going to put increasing healthy individuals. So more than 100 named Nicardia species. Most common are your uh, Brazilianses, um, Cyrisigorgica, Nicardia 
Persinia Nicardia abscessus complex and Nova. I wouldn't put the less encountered species. Let's see. Okay, so at one time, Nicardia asteroides was considered the most prominent Nicardia human pathogen. That's the one I remember most. Uh, with the more frequent use of molecular methods, it has since been found that um, asteroides is rarely, if ever, pathogenic. Virulence factors. And since it's not really differentiating out these species, um, if it's not giving you a bunch of um, a bunch of different either tests for them or um, morphologies or anything like that, then they're usually like doesn't quite matter if they're differentiated. So I wouldn't sit there like remembering all the different kinds if you can just remember Encardia. So virulence factors. Anything from there important? Um, Nocardia SVP produces superoxide and dimetose and catalase, I think. Yep, which may provide resistance to oxidative killing um, by phagocytites. So, produced in an iron chelating compound. Okay, so you can put, um, how would you word that? Just the, the superoxide dismutase one in catalase. Uh, let's see, it produces superoxide dismutase and catalase. Makes it resistant to phagocytosis. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you had to make a note about that, how would you write it out? Mm -hmm. Is that an easy sentence to remember if you just wrote down the sentence? I think so. Sort of. I think so. Well, you there's got a better brain than me. Oh, there's a lot of baby. <laughs> I. Can't really think of a way to cut it down. I personally, I'd put phagocyte resistant and then put um, peroxide to paste on the catalyst. You can either put resistant or resistant, whichever one sounds right for you. And then I put this nocobactin. Sounds like it could be a question. So the nocobactin. Iron chelating. What's chelating mean? It chelates iron. Y'all remember, like when EDTA chelates calcium, what does it do? Bonding? Yep, binds it. So iron chelating means it binds iron. Now, clinical infection. Pulmonary and cutaneous. I'll put pulmonary first. 
and then a couple notes, and then cutaneous. Pulmonary is from inhalating, inhalating the dust or soil. And we've got cutaneous. What's, um, how do you get it cutaneously? It's just going to be hand, like right? a cut or something. Mm -hmm. You have a cut and you put your hand in dirt or Let's see if you have a foot and you're walking on the dirt. Um, I'm going to put under infection. Y'all see where it says 40%? Mm -hmm. So what is that? 40% what? Uh, diagnosis are made at autopsy. Yep. So the mortality rate is high and patients who survive often have significant tissue damage. I put survival. Long-term tissue damage. Okay, now it's talking more about pulmonary and cutaneous infection. I would just put um, that bronchopneumonia. It's nice to look over these. Um, you know, it, it's showing you the difference in the um, bronchopneumonia you would get from uh, nicardia compared to um, the sulfur granules from, um, that would be shown in your actinomycetes, if you have an aerobic, anaerobic um, version of those, or uh, the difference in your tuberculosis. So it's nice that it's mentioning those, but I wouldn't put them specifically on here, just because um, the things that differentiate them are negative in the cardia and positive in the others. So if I wrote the notes for it, I would put it under like tuberculosis or under um, an anaerobic um, actinomycetes. So then our cutaneous, would y'all take any notes from cutaneous? Lesions, the subcutaneous abscesses. Okay. Subcutaneous abscesses. I would put the specific species uh, Brazilians. or Brazilensis. Um, I would definitely put, what's the, what's your term down here? What, y'all don't want to see these fun words, too? 
Actinomycotic. Uh-huh. Mycetoma. And your guess is as good as anyone else's. Eumycotic mycetomas. Yep. Now what are these? So we'll do our actinomycotic mycetomas first. So they are mycetomas caused by bacteria um, versus um, mycetomas caused by um, fungi. And so let's see if we got mycetoma bacteria specifically. Okay, and we do have mycetoma back here. So what I'm actually, um, what I'm going to do instead is put um, the paper right here. For my page. Okay, so put mycetoma, and um, I've already got it in the back. It's a localized subcutaneous abscess caused by Nicardia species and other aerobic um, actinomycetes, and so localized subcutaneous abscess. So actually, we put subcutaneous abscess up there, so we can put mycetoma. And then we can get our actinomycotic my, my, uh, mycetomas um, caused by bacteria. And then we'll take our mycotic mycetomas and we'll put caused by fungi. And then I'll put the, the species that's usually the cause back in there. Okay, what else? These do have the sulfur granules, the cutaneous. Yep. Pus may be pigmented and contain sulfur granules. So we can put, I would just put pus, sulfur granule, and in parentheses, what color it could be. So pus sulfur granules, yellow or orange. So I think we're safe to go down to the microscopy. We already put gram positive and everything. We got our gram positive and everything. So gram positive beaded branching filaments seen in sputum and exudates or aspirates from skin or abscesses. So observation of a filamentous branching isolate that is particularly acid fast, uh, partial, I'm sorry, partially acid fast on staining with carbo uh, carbyl fusion and decolorizing with a weak acid. Um, so we can go up here and highlight partially acid fast. We can highlight our finely beaded branching rods too, right?
And then I would go down the, the culture characteristics. So we already have um, standard non-selective media can take over a week to grow. So I think that's still one of the most important things out of this culture characteristics paragraph. Um, what's another important note that should go with culture characteristics? Beta hemolytic on SBA. Are other things beta hemolytic on SBA? No. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit before that. Oh, I was looking at the chart. Oh, okay. And that's the only one in the chart that mentions the beta hemolytic. That is very the, true. These ones. I would put you that they are um, that the antimicrobial agents used for isolating fungi should not be used because they are susceptible to many of the agents used in these media. So media containing antimicrobial agents used for isolating fungi should not be used. So. So branching fine, intertwining delicate filaments with fragmentation, extremely variable, some isolates are beta hemolytic, um, wrinkled, often dry, chalky white appearance to orange tan pigment. Crumbly may produce spores from aerial hyphae. I think that like chalky, so colonies of Nicardia species might have a chalky, chalky, matte, velvety, or powdery appearance and maybe white, yellow, pink, orange, peach, tan, or gray pigmented. Um, they can have a dry, crumbly appearance similar to breadcrumbs. I think if you ever get asked a question, it's going to be though that beaded branching filaments that are partially acid fast. But I'm gonna include this. Um, In the picture on page 359, the wrinkly does look weird compared to other ones I've seen. Right? Yeah, so I'm gonna put this chalky, chalky um, and then we can put crumbly, wrinkly, it does really look like wrinkly. So these are things that are kind of specific for, you know, uh, unlike other ones.
I think that's, yeah, I really, I mean, if I made a note card for this, my note card would probably say Nucardia, aerobic, branch, beaded, gram positive, finely beaded branching rods, and partially acid fast. Maybe these notes on the colonies are chocolatey, crumbly, or wrinkly, or like a picture or something. I wouldn't include much more than that. 